next talk i think everyone is waiting for a long time after a lunch quickly finishing lunch coming here and so i i'll not waste a lot of time so the next talk is uh, about toying with dns and our next speaker is kailash nath he is a obis developer and loves tinkering around lot of open source softwares and promoting uh, open source solutions so over to you kailash please give a big round of applause for kailash Well, good afternoon. So last year I built a hobby project. It was unplanned, just happened spontaneously. Uh, it involved quite a bit of abusing of the of DNS, the domain name system. So I'll talk about that project here. So there are a bunch of these web searches, frequent web searches that I do. I'm pretty sure many of us do. Quick uh, local weather check. currency conversion uh, disk size bytes to mb mb to gb etc etc quick conversions you quickly plop them into your search engine google and you get a response this has always felt a little odd to me because the actual query let's say bangalore weather maybe that's 15 bytes in length but the response that you get back is a super bloated web page with uh, hundreds of kbs worth of javascript assets css etc just to give me a tiny little response that has always bugged me there is one time when it turned into real annoyance the <clears throat> so google outright broke for basic uh, unit conversions you can see that my query here i took the screenshot yesterday so it's still broken years later you can see that i've done, i've written 1024 bytes to mb but google has picked up bytes as mb megabytes and mb as gigabytes i, I have no idea why it's basic string parsing and this got really annoying at one point last year and uh there's of course the units command that you can install uh, apt install units or dnf install units and it does universal unit conversion but that's only for units like i said i have a lot of these recurring searches that i do temperature weather unit conversions currency conversion etc so i figured you know i'll hack it make a little write a little bash script and be done with it so that i don't have to put these queries into the search engine anymore so i figured i'd write a bash script but then i figured writing a bash script would be a bit bit of a pain because writing and maintaining bash scripts is not easy so i thought i'd write a cli tool maybe in python or go and give it a nice cli api but then i realized that that would require installation i would whatever script i write whatever program i write it would have to be copied and installed on the system for me to be able to use it or for the others to use it and the thought process uh <clears throat> the thought process really goes like that a lot of hobby fast projects start out like that you want to do something you want to solve a problem for yourself but you also want others to be able to use it and get that solution easily themselves so i decided not to write a cli installable cli and i thought i'd write a web service you know just an http thing you do a curl bangalore weather you get the response back but i don't really know what was running through my head that day i don't know how my head was primed towards dns but http felt really bloated so if you write a web service uh, that responds with a unit conversion answer or a temperature check or whatever and you simply send a curl request the headers that go in kind of look like this and depending on what cdn you are on you are behind that cdn might add a dozen or more headers so the tiny little question 1024 bytes to mb that's my entire query but the amount of protocol jugglery that happens uh, to deliver an answer is quite bloated and if i have a website somewhere let's say uh, httpbtools.net whatever the tls handshake alone would be several kbs so i was in a mood to hack that day and i didn't want to waste kbs and kbs of bandwidth just to send a 10 byte query to a server and get a 10 byte response back it just felt wrong so like i said i don't exactly recollect why i had dns in my mind but dns was in my mind this is funny adage on the internet rule 53 53 is the port on which dns servers listen they've been listening on port 53 for like 40 years so the joke goes like this if you can think of it someone's done it on dns and it's not in a good way the dns puritans they hate people who abuse dns but it's fun to abuse dns it's like people running quake on 
calculators and washing machines and microwaves. I mean, it's one of those memes. So I found a cool uh, short do domain name for the project, dns.toys, was really excited by it. When I registered it last year, it cost $10. I renewed it this year, it's become $100. So don't use the toys domain for your toy project. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. So a DNS query uh, kind of looks like this. DNS stands for Domain Name System. When you open your browser, you put in google.com into the address bar, hit enter. Your browser needs to know which server to connect to, Google server, to retrieve google.com and its contents and render it. So it has to, it uses the D Domain Name System, which underlies pretty much the entire ne networked world right now. And DNS is the protocol that underlies, the system that underlies internet itself, the World Wide Web itself, and networks. So when you type google.com and hit enter, uh, your browser sends a DNS request, a small little packet, typically UDP, to a DNS server. When you set up your laptop, you configure your DNS server to be 8.8.8.8 or 1.1.1. That's the DNS server, Google and Cloudflare, most popular ones. So the browser sends a request saying, I need to give me the IP address of google.com. And that's a DNS query. It's called an A record, getting the IP addresses back. And the DNS server takes the request and res responds with the IP address. And the browser connects to the IP address, retrieves google.com, and that's how you end up with google.com in your browser. So the packet that your browser sends, or any DNS client sends, kind of looks like this. Uh, it's one long string of bytes. It's a tightly packed binary byte string array, uh, array sequence. And it has the header, the question that you pose. For instance, give me the address for google.com. The answer when the entire packet comes back from the DNS server and a bunch of other metadata fields. So the DNS header is really tiny. It's 12 bytes. Just a TLS handshake on an HTTPS website is 5 KB or 10 KB or whatever. So DNS is a really nice, tight, pure, simple protocol. <clears throat> the header consists of these fields. We don't have to jump into all of these fields. It's just to illustrate the structure. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so the ID field is two bytes, and you know a bunch of these other things. Uh, and so the header comes first, 12 bytes, then your question. So here's an example question. So uh, here we are asking for the A record, which is the IP address that a domain name points to, for example.com. That's the question on top. So when you send the DNS request, it literally looks like this. You have example.com dot A in. Now that dot is quite curious, example.com dot. Uh, that dot indicates that it's an FQD, a fully qualified domain name. Uh, it indicates that we are looking for example.com, which is a standalone qualified domain name. If you omit that dot, it becomes a relative domain. So the DNS server will look at example.com relative to its own uh, name that has been configured. So it's a global standard. Whenever you send a request to a DNS server, the domain name ends with a dot A. And the answer kind of looks like this. Here, example.com has two IP addresses that point to it, and the browser or any DNS client is free, uh, free to pick one of these and just connect. The answer also just comes as text like this, uh, but as a byte sequence. If you have your system open, you can always try this uh, dig command. So dig is a cool command. It is ubiquitous on all Linux systems, Unix systems, Unix-like systems. I think it's been, again, around for 40 years. So it, it's ever present. So it's really cool to not install anything and use a utility that's been around forever to get stuff done, like low-grade compute or DNS. So that's the A record. There's also the TXT record. There are many different kinds of records in DNS. There's, a, there's the A record, DNS, sorry, TXT record, MX record, etc. TXT is meant for delivering arbitrary text. Uh, and if you run dig txt example.com, you'll get the text records for that. So here's a dig example of running that command. You can try this on your own system. Uh, dig has a plus short command, which is a shorthand for hiding all the information metadata and only showing the response, which is quite nice. So what if instead of example.com or google.com, you sent an arbitrary string like Bengaluru-weather, or you know, 1,000 bytes to 
MB as a text record to a DNS server, you won't get a response back because these are not valid domain names. And DNS systems, DNS servers, uh, exist to respond to queries about domain names. However, from a protocol perspective, it's still valid. It's a string. It's formatted uh, with the right structure. It has the right headers. It goes and comes back with a nil, nil response. You can try sending this to, let's say, 8.8.8. .8 you won't get a response because it's not a real domain name. However, that opens up an interesting possibility. The question that goes to a DNS server is a string. The answer that comes back, if it chooses to respond for a valid domain name, that's also a string. So that's it then. You can abuse the string question, string answer schema to create a DNS server that doesn't understand domain names, let's say google.com, example.com, but it understands whatever you want it to understand, you know, Bengaluru weather, and then responds as text records, string records. As long as the response requests everything adheres to the protocol with the right headers, right fields, it's a valid DNS transaction. So I built that. Uh, it's, it's available on dns.toys, you can check it out. Uh, it's a DNS server that listens on port 53. You can send it any DNS request. If you ask for google.com's A records, it won't give, give that response back because it's a fake toy server that only understands abusive text like Bengaluru weather. Uh, so the headers that I showed earlier the way to construct DNS packets, etc. you typically don't have to bother with it because every language has a well-constructed DNS library. You just have to use that library to deal with the high-level stuff of sending a question and getting an answer back, just a few lines of code. And with that, you can create a low-grade uh, SaaS over DNS. And, and it'll work on most networks, even on, let's say, hotel Wi-Fi's. DNS servers are typically open. So if you want to check weather or do unit conversions when you don't have internet but DNS works, Stuff like this works. So if you send help to add DNS toys here, which is the DNS server, you'll get a list of all the commands that it supports. It has a bunch of very interesting things. The one that I, one thing that I use very frequently is dig IP at DNS toys. It, it'll give you your own IP address back. It's just like that IP echo service, but you don't have to now Google what's my IP address. You can just have, send that DNS back in and you'll get the response back. And I did the service with three, four uh, queries that I typically have, you know, Mumbai.time, world time, currency conversion, but then people added, uh, people submitted a lot of really cool hacks. Somebody submitted a service that responds with aerial distance calculation between two coordinates. I mean, I have no idea why they decided to do it over DNS, but someone actually put in the effort of sending that PR and I merged it. Uh, coin toss. I think this was a Dungeons and Dragons player, and they wanted to do coin tosses over DNS for some reason. So that also happened. So people sent features, and I merged them all. So you have a bunch of these very you know, low-grade compute services. And it's quite beautiful, because when you send the DNS query, it's sending one packet, UDP. You send that one packet, you get that response in one packet. HTTP would be perhaps over TCP, hundreds of packets. Of course, it doesn't matter in today's days and age, but deep inside, you know that this is purer and nicer. So th these are some of the examples. Uh, just send whatever queries and get response back. Perfectly valid DNS transactions, but a horrible abuse of what DNS servers are meant to be. So I was, uh, I'd gotten curious. So I launched this app uh, last year, and I use it personally. So a few other people also use it personally. So I wanted to see how many DNS queries were coming in for these questions. And I figured I was done with this project. I didn't want to look at it ever again. And I was too lazy to implement the counter. So Netstat gives you, a tot gives you aggregated statistics of the total number of packets, UDB packets that hit it. So I just count that. I think as of yesterday, as of last night, 6.86 million DNS queries have hit this toy server. So the people out there, using this in all seriousness, I don't know, to check world time or compute aerial distance or whatever. 6.86 million queries. And I'll end with this. Thank you. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I didn't realize we have five more minutes. So if you have any questions, please. Oh, yes, 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 yes. 
So it doesn't solve the packet overload problem that much. It just Sorry, transfers yeah, that's it. That's two packets. Yeah. I so, mean, uh, but uh, if you're doing this, let's say Bangalore time, so you would be using some weather, uh, some time service that may ha add its own overhead or HTTP, and then you would need that HTTP parsing, etc. If you're, let's say, using Google or you're using the conversions. I'm just saying it's just transferring that lots of packets from coming to the client to actually s your own server. Am I right in thinking that way? Because arbitrary, so I, I like the idea that what you are doing is you are parsing it, you have, have your own domain specific language which basically passes and says that if it's weather, we use this service and translates and does it on your behalf. So I was truly committed to the project and I didn't want any DNS query to send upstream queries. So the, all computations are local. Currency conversion data is fetched once a day and cached locally. Right. There's an English dictionary which is local. Uh, weather is cached for one hour. So you can do, let's say, berlin.weather. It might send a request upstream, but the, for the next hour, all the requests are cached. But there is this one interesting thing that I miss. Typically, when you do dig uh, and speak to a DNS server, you do at the rate IP of the DNS server, because you don't you deal with IPs of DNS servers, because otherwise, you'll have to have another DNS server that resolves the IP to the DNS server itself. Now, that is happening here. So when you do at dns.toys, dig is first trying to resolve the request to dns.toys by speaking to the actual uh, local DNS server, which is your Cloudflare or Google or whatever. Then it gets that dns.toys IP, and then it sends its DNS uh, packet. So it's actually two packets that are. Uh, <laughs> you can, you can, but I'm not that committed to this toy project, so. <laughs> uh, anyone else? Is there any other protocol that would work equally well? Actually, there is this one very interesting protocol, which I'm a little nostalgic about, uh, that existed back in the day. Uh, I think it's dead now. It's, it was called the finger protocol. It was meant for generic query answer, quick query and uh, query question answer transactions. Uh, you sent a finger, and you asked a question, whatever the finger server understood, and you'd get a response back. But I think that protocol died. It's not no longer in use. Well, apparently Debian is still, Debian still has, still using it, classic Debian, yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah, because you could transmit arbitrary stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You could look up the local directory, right, yeah. Uh, we have a few more minutes, couple more minutes, if there are questions. I think maybe yeah, someone's raising their hand. Yeah. Sorry. I thought typically DNS records have a time to live, right? Like when we are configuring it for a website. So what's the case here? Yes. So uh, here you see that uh, 17, for example, example.com 17, that's 17 seconds. Every response comes back with a TTL, time to live, which is in seconds, which instructs the client to cache that record and not send further DNS requests. But DNS toy is response with one, saying, don't cache, ask again. So. No, no, I think I, it returns one for everything. No, no, what I was cache. saying is, now, when you are doing the first query and you are sending the, uh, the, uh, the request upstream, then you, I'm not sure whether you're doing it, but you could add a text record in your database for that specific query with a TTL of, let's say, 24 hours in case it's a, it's a, a currency conversion for one hour if it's a weather thing and that sort of a thing. Yeah, that would, so that, that would way be the TTL will automatically, if you're yeah, really yeah. querying for Bangalore weather again and again, yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. even need to go upstream or you don't even need to do the calculation again. It's true. I, I could do it, but someone can send PR. <laughs> So, time's uh, up, time's up, sorry. Us. Uh, time's up, uh, we can chat outside later. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much Kailash for such an insightful session and especially this interactive Q&A.